Hey everybody, welcome back to Run and Gun. And this episode is going to be all about white balance. What does white balancing mean? It basically means that you're going to be removing all sorts of unrealistic color casts. You want your photo to represent what you saw in real life. So you want an object that appears white to your eyes to also look white in your photograph. Pretty simple, and we're going to keep it simple. I'm going to make sure by the end of this video, you guys understand all about white balance. So let's get right into it. All right, so I have an image here open in Lightroom. This is a picture of an old film camera of mine. Yes, you guys are going to see some photos of it in another video. But for now, this camera was sitting on some rocks that are pretty gray, pretty neutral color. That's what you're, that's what you're searching for when you're looking to white balance your image. You're looking for neutral colors, whites, grays, uh, light blacks, etc. So there's some orange lichen on this rock. You can see the orange patterns on there. That can really mess up your color balance if, for, uh, for example, you're just shooting in auto. Your camera can read that orange and say, that's pretty warm, and compensate for that and make your image blue, which would make your blue rocks and your black camera look kind of bluish. So the color temperature I shot this image at is 5150, 5150K. And K stands for Kelvin, which is the metric that we use for color temperature and measuring color in photography. So that was how I calibrated it, which is pretty close to the daylight setting when we look in your presets in your camera. So I'm gonna quickly go through some of the camera presets that'll get you pretty close, and then we'll talk about custom white balance and Kelvin a little bit more. So let's talk about our first custom preset setting, which most people go to, which is auto white balance. Auto white balance is absolutely great. If you're just getting started, heck, I use auto white balance all the time. There's nothing wrong with it. You just have to be careful. You have to make sure that there is something in your image that your camera can recognize, excuse me, recognize as a neutral color so that let's say you have a giant pile of red leaves on the ground, your camera is going to compensate for all that red and try and shift your colors a little cooler or blue to make all of that red a little more neutral because that's what it's looking for. Your camera doesn't really know reds and blues. They're all relative. It's looking for something very neutral. And then from there, it can estimate all the rest of your colors. So white balance is great. Just be careful when you use it how you use it and make sure that you're monitoring your photos as you're taking them and making sure you're getting accurate color because that's the key here. I want the most accurate image I can get in my camera so then I can edit it the way I want to and make the colors look the way I saw them when I put it into Lightroom or Photoshop. So one of the next presets and one of the ones I use the most is probably daylight. When you're shooting outdoors, it's easy. It's a little sun with the little rays coming out. And daylight adds a little bit of warm tones. Um, let's open up an image here and we'll see. Daylight is, I believe, about 55,000, excuse me, 5,500K or Kelvin. So we're moving, like I said, my image I shot at 5,100K and we're moving up that scale a little bit in temperature and it's getting a little bit warmer as the numbers go up. So that's what your daylight will give you. What other options do you have? You have cloudy, which basically looks like a little cloud, and that'll bump you up to 6,500K. Again, a little bit warmer. We have shade, looks like a little house, and that bumps you up even warmer to make up for that shade to 7,500K. And at that point, if I look at my film camera image, it's making, starting to make the rocks look a little bit orangish, and I don't like that. It's even making my black camera look a little bit like a dark yellow or a dark orange, like I'm shooting with like gels or something. I don't like it. It's not accurate. It feels a little bit wrong. We have tungsten, which is also known as incandescent. Um, the little filaments in your light bulbs are made out of tungsten, and those are extremely yellow. So what your camera will do will compensate by adding blue. So if you took a photo in daylight, like my camera image, it will turn that photo very blue 
because it thinks that um, your light is very yellow, so it compensates. Now, in this example, it turned my rocks completely blue and it's completely inaccurate. We have fluorescent. Now, fluorescent's getting a little bit warmer with 3800K. And in this example, my rocks are still looking really blue, so I wouldn't use this fluorescent for shooting outdoors in the sun. Now, what's another preset we have? A really cool preset is flash. Flash is anywhere from around 5200 to 5500K. So we're getting close to that daylight again because your flash is kind of blue, so it's gonna compensate with those warmer tones. Now, that actually looks pretty accurate. Your flash is supposed to be white and close to daylight. So that makes sense that flash is looking very close to my daylight preset. They're both 5500K. They just differ a little bit when it comes to the tint, which is your green or purple values. That's why you'll see fluorescent lights. They'll turn your image a little bit greenish and your preset will add a little bit of pink or um, magenta to compensate for those green tones. You'll see in old films and stuff in fluorescent lights in bathrooms, for example, um, they'll look very green and grungy. A lot of horror films light their films with that green fluorescent light because it looks very strange and odd. We don't exactly see that all the time we're, when we're looking at fluorescent lights with our eyes. So what else do we have? We also have custom. Custom's awesome. In Lightroom or Photoshop, that means you can take your eyedropper and you can go in and you can drop it on a neutral point in your image and then it will from there calibrate the rest of your image and say this point in my image is neutral and Lightroom can take all of the rest of the pixels and properly interpret them how they would look to your eye in real life. So you find out what is white and your camera goes, okay, this is white. We're gonna take care of all the rest of your colors for you. Now custom's a little bit different than auto, for example, because you're gonna be taking an actual point that you selected and you know is a neutral color, either a dark white, a gray, a light black. If you're doing auto, again, Lightroom is gonna select that for you. It might not be quite accurate. And in your camera, custom means that you're gonna find either a gray card that you can um, bring with you to a, shoot, to a shoot, or you're gonna find something neutral in your scene, like a white wall, something gray, that you can actually measure light off of and calibrate your image to that. And one of our other settings we have in camera would be actual Kelvins, where you can actually go in, it looks like a little K, and you can go in and do it all by yourself. You can measure exactly which is what I did with this image, just so you guys know um, why I got that 5150, which is kind of a weird number. It wasn't daylight, it wasn't flash, it wasn't something else. I went in there and dialed the Kelvins themselves because I didn't exactly have a spot that I could white balance and make a custom white balance. I didn't have a gray card with me, so I had to eyeball it. And don't forget that you can also use white balance as an effect once you know the rules, learn how to break the rules, but you have to understand the rules. And what I mean by that is, let's say you want your image to feel cooler than it actually is. The, the white balance might not be accurate, but if you want to move that slider in Lightroom to a little bit cooler to make your image feel cold, go for it. That's an artistic decision for you to make. If you want an image to feel a little bit warmer, move that slider warmer or shoot it in camera on a warmer preset. It's done all the time for weddings, make skin tones feel a little bit warmer than they actually are. It might not be numerically accurate, but it's gonna make a better looking image. And I brought up that example of leaves earlier. Maybe you want that image to look a little bit warmer. You might shoot it on a cloudy preset if it's sunny, just to add that little bit of warmth or go into your custom Kelvin and turn it up and warmth just a little bit. So that's the basics of white balance. Great tool, make sure you're shooting accurate white balance, or if you know the rules, go ahead, break them, play with custom white balance and some of the effects you can create with that. 
So that is all for this episode. I hope that helped you guys out. Make sure you give me a like down below if you like this video and make sure you're subscribing for my videos every weekend. I will talk to you guys later. New video coming next weekend. And as always, get out and go shoot.